Hey, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome back to San Bernardino Zoo, episode 20. Thank you so much for joining me. We are looking at San Bernardino Zoo's brand new greenhouse. And if you're wondering why we have a greenhouse, today we're going to be adding one of the rarest animals in the world to the zoo. And they're going to be going in the area at the back of the islands that you can see here. It's the proboscis monkey. I am so excited to add these into the zoo. I have never built anything for the proboscis monkeys before. I've only ever seen them once when I did a zoo tour of somebody else's zoo and they have some pretty particular needs. Um, they are rare in the wild and they are even rarer in zoos. There isn't a single zoo outside Indonesia that holds them. I think Singapore Zoo is the only zoo I can name that actually has them. And the main reason for that is that they do not do well in zoos at all, primarily because, as I understand it, unless they can eat the exact plants that they eat on the island of Borneo where they live, then they have a nasty habit of dying. So most zoos, or almost all zoos, and no zoos outside of Indonesia keep them. Um, so they're gonna need a lot of looking after. And I thought it'd be really interesting to add them into San Bernardino Zoo in the islands area, which obviously is based on where they live. So there's a lot of things we need to think about in terms of this build. Firstly, it needs to be very well protected, which is why we are building a dome. The area that you're looking at is the temporary shelter that we built for the gibbons back when we first started the islands, um, which I was going to get rid of. Uh, instead, we're going to modify it heavily because I actually really like the walls that we have here. Um, it just didn't really work as a shelter. So this is now going to be a backdrop and then we're going to cover it with a dome so that the monkeys are protected. This dome is based on the flying forest aviary for fruit bats that I built in the Moonlight World. We've just shrunk it down to size um, and made sure that it fits nicely over the habitat. The islands were pretty much designed to keep animals in via water, um, as they normally are when you build an island habitat, which is a bit of a problem for proboscis monkeys because those guys can swim and they really like swimming. They can even swim underwater. So we need a way to let them into the water without letting them out of the habitat and um, onto the paths among the guests. So that is where the dome comes in. It also means they can't be um, you know, harmed by any native animals. No other animals can get into the habitat just to make sure that they're safe. And the theme that we're gonna go for with the habitat is a mangrove swamp. That is the main habitat that proboscis monkeys live in. I thought it'd be really cool to build them their own little mangrove swamp. So we're gonna use a mixture of the mangrove trees and a load of extra lianas um, to really give it that sort of cluttered mangrovey look, um, get a lot more roots in there. And then we're gonna use some of the mud walls with the strangler fig roots inside them that we've used quite a few times in the zoo because that gives us that nice gnarly look that we want. So we'll use this to build up a shoreline. I want really good access for the monkeys into the water so they can swim around in front of the guests. Um, so we're gonna use a load of these and keep lowering them until we get a really smooth transition from the terrain to the water. It's a pretty sizable habitat, but I'll be designing it to encourage the monkeys to spend as much time as possible at the front of the habitat where the guests are for the best viewing opportunities. So we get a load of these in, and while we do that, I'll explain the greenhouse. So in order for the monkeys to have the food that they depend upon to survive, we're gonna need to grow it. Um, you can't be just importing huge amounts of vegetation in from Borneo every day. That is not cost effective. It's also really difficult to get it to grow, I think, outside of Borneo, which is why most zoos don't hold proboscis monkeys. The other thing, and I'm purely guessing here, but I imagine the vast majority of people who go to zoos have never heard of proboscis monkeys and spending enormous amounts of money growing food for them in greenhouses designed especially for that purpose in order to hold an animal that most people have never heard of um, that is also <laughs> kind of ugly <laughs> is, uh, is probably not cost effective um, for most zoos. Luckily, this isn't a real zoo, so we can do whatever we want here. So I've spun some of the mud walls onto their sides so that we can use them in this direction. And this gives us a really interesting texture for the ground with all the roots sticking out as well, just to get that um, really mangrovey kind of feel. I'm not sure mangrovey is a word, um, but yeah, it's starting to look pretty interesting already. Let's raise the ground up to meet the um, mud walls so that we get a nice smooth look a little bit more. And I think we'll be fine. There we go. Okay, and then we'll move on to the first focal point in the habitat. What I want is a forage feeder right in the center so that the monkeys are in view of the guests. So we're gonna do the path trick that we looked at last week to make sure we can keep the terrain where it is. 
uh, drop the forage pool in so it is um, slightly sunken and then we'll delete the path and then do some work on the terrain to get it nicely covered up. We'll drop one of the custom mangrove trees created by Romano Palacios that we've used before in the background. We'll put a few of these in there just to give us a bit of variety with the mangroves that we've created. And then it's onto the wall. So I want this to look like an old broken down temple. So we're going to start deleting parts of the wall, adding decals, moving things around, slanting this so it looks like it's falling down and just getting a really sort of decrepit kind of look to it. I think that will be a really interesting background to the habitat. And we're also going to delete some parts of the wall as well to let some more light in. There's going to be a shelter for the monkeys behind it and a few other things, but we don't want the guests to see those. So the wall pieces are going to do the job of keeping those hidden for us. Next up, we're going to transform the front of this pretty generic dome into something much more interesting for the guests. So we're going to replace the mesh at the bottom with glass to get a better viewing. So we'll just place some more metal in here to get that looking correct. Ignore the branches running up the dome. That was an experiment that we're going to get rid of in a minute but we definitely need some much better viewing along here. I want three panels of glass to give a really nice wide viewing area. So there's the first one and there's all three of them. That is gonna work a lot better. Let's start setting it into the water now. So we'll get some grunge texture here and turn this into moss as we've done before so we can get that looking nice and natural and put some plants in as well. We'll drop in one of the Balani statues that we've used throughout the area for some continuity. I think that little dude looks pretty cool sat in there. And then we will get some climbing in. This will be covered up by a huge mangrove tree in a second. And then we'll move on to the shelter. We're gonna use the generic shelter that we used in the cassowaries. It doesn't need to look amazing or themed because it's gonna be hidden away behind these walls. And as I've said before, in real zoos, you don't spend money on things that can't be seen. And now it's time for Franchise Masters. So have you ever wanted to replace a piece that you've already put down with a different piece? Like I want to change this four meter log for a one meter log. You can spend ages mucking around with it or just select the piece, hit control X to copy and then select the new piece that you want to replace it with. That will place that piece in the exact same position and rotation as the original piece. You can place it down, delete the original piece and now you've got the new piece that you want in exactly the place that you want it. Easy. On to the greenhouse. So I mentioned that we need a greenhouse to grow the food for the proboscis monkeys. So I'm gonna build a classic glass house for that. I love these glass houses. I never really get the opportunity to build one. Got pretty close to it with the roof on the tropical house, but now we're gonna go all out and build one of these. Now I want this to be visible from the path behind the habitat, just to sort of um, sell the idea that we are making the food for the proboscis monkeys here. So we're gonna build this. I started off building it white as they usually are, but I decided to tone it down a little bit later on so it's not quite as striking. And then we're gonna fill it with tamarind trees. Um, the actual plants and berries that the proboscis monkeys eat in Borneo, uh, we don't have any of them in Planet Zoo, uh, but I looked them up and the closest thing that we have in the game is the tamarind tree, because it's got the sort of red flowers on it um, and it's quite tropical looking. So we're gonna fill this greenhouse with them and then do some detailing and just we're not going to go crazy with it we're just going to make it so that when you see it from the path it looks like a realistic greenhouse and then we'll start working on the dome so that we can join the walls of the dome onto the greenhouse this was not easy <laughs> the the greenhouse is square and the dome is round so joining those two together took a lot of um, mucking around with the various different pieces, but we got there in the end. And then we're gonna do some more work on the wall and make this even more tumbled down. And we're gonna make sure that the monkeys can actually get up on this wall and run around on it with some more climbing pieces later on and covering it with the decals that I mentioned so we really get that old tumble down wall kind of look to it. And the more pieces of the wall that we remove, the more light we get into the habitat as well, which is really important. And um, we got some finishing touches to do, but the basics of the habitat are in, so it's time to join it up with the rest of the zoo. So we're gonna do a load of work on the paths, most of it off camera, but you'll see in the drone shot at the end that we have almost finished the whole of the islands now. There's just a couple of habitats to go, which I think we will do in the next episode. I'm using mainly bamboo, and then some of the jungle that we created to just fill everything in and make sure all the staff paths are covered up and the guest paths are really lush and have got that island feel. Sorry this episode is a little shorter than normal by the way, I lost some footage in the edit and I didn't want to just 
stretch it out to make it 15 minutes so it is a little shorter than normal but i'm really happy with the build as it is finished we're going to add some enrichment items onto the roof to make sure that the monkeys actually do some climbing and then put in the climbing to get them from the climbing frame onto the roofs add some nails into the log for realism and then the final thing to do is to finish off the viewing area. This is the footage I lost, so apologies for that. I don't think I've ever lost footage before. It's an absolute schoolboy error, so sorry for that. But you can see what we've started doing here. And now we're just gonna add some more decorations in to give it that Indonesian kind of vibe. And then I thought I'd put some more structural support in as well, just because this part of the dome is glass rather than mesh. Uh, I have no idea what that would mean in real life, but I thought some sort of tension wires would look cool and um, it just provide it with a bit more of a visible means of support. I'm using the European fan cable here, which is absolutely brilliant for making wires. You've also got the light cable if you need a slightly thinner wire. We'll move this across here, and that is the build pretty much done. Time to get the proboscis monkeys in. I haven't done one of these sequences in ages, and I thought you guys might like to see how the islands area is coming along. So here is our caretaker bringing the first of the proboscis monkeys into the habitat. Let's check it out. There we go. Kalimantan, by the way, is the word for Borneo in their native language. I love the splash of color at the front of the habitat there. There's the greenhouse in the background, doing exactly what I wanted it to do, just sort of just peeking over the top of it. Let's check out the monkeys. They seem to be enjoying this habitat. We've got so much climbing in here. All the roots of the mangroves are climbable, along with all the actual climbing frames um, and all the other stuff that we have in here. And they're definitely enjoying the swimming pool that they have at the front as well. They are weirdly cute, or the females anyway, the male not so much. We are so close to finishing the islands now. The next episode we are either going to complete the islands area or start a brand new area. I haven't decided yet. I hope you are as excited about that as I am. Before we go, let's check out the drone shots and see how far we've come on today. That's where we were. And this is where we are now. I will see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.